Brad Brownell. Hey, hey, the most secure coach in the ACC. Here we go. Look at all that hair. Look at all that hair for a guy. This is the most secure guy ever. You can't quite as gray as you. Working on bad. I'm just happy I have some. That's what we want you. That's why we want you. I mean, we're having every coach. We want you to take it down. All these young coaches are scary. You've been battling. Wait, wait, wait. You put him in the. You put him in the cast. Hey, let's go oh. back to. I had your back. You I had your oh, back God. after that Sweet 16. I put Radakovich right there, right there across from me, and I made him say he was going to give you a damn extension. Yes, and you know what? You got another one, and you deserved it after this run. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was fun. You know, really. It was amazing. Yeah, like what, reflect on this because I don't know if even you could have imagined before the season that you would have this type of ride this past season. Cause it's, yeah. it's a little bit of a roller coaster. It was. You know, I thought we had a really good team. I really did. And we got off to a great start. Had a little bit of a rocky January. But I just think that's part of league play. It's part of a long season. You know, I think that's where having that right guys behind you in your locker room as a team leadership is vital because you are going to go through some adversity. Uh, if those guys stick with you, you got a shot. And we were good enough to do big things. And you know, they, you get you make it to the tournament, anything can happen. It's about right. matchups. It's about building momentum. We obviously played really well, and and we're just. It was a fun ride, that's for sure. Uh, Jeff, I'm not going to let him get away with that. A year ago, we were talking here. He knew he had a damn good yeah, team, right. and we were talking Elite privately. Eight, and I, Elite eight. I mean, he, he knows this. I told them last year in Tiona. They were my pick to win the league a year ago. Wow. So I was not wow. surprised they made it run. And I yeah. told him that. He, did. he knows. He did. He What's did. Price? He did. As you enter this season, we talked with your guys yeah. a little bit earlier, and Ian and Chase were awesome. Awesome. What do you think uh, distinguishes this group, perhaps, in the way that you can play? I hope we have more depth. Um, I don't know you lose a P.J. Hall, Joe Girard. Joe Girard, 2,000 points in ACC basketball. Remarkable. P.J. Hall probably have his jersey retired at Clemson. We still have good players. Chase and Ian are good players. Chauncey Wiggins is a good player. I don't know if their jerseys yet are ready. Um, but we do have depth. I think we have eight, nine guys that can contribute. I think Dylan Hunter, Chase's brother, is going to be a, a good player for us. Jake Heidberger, who we have sitting off the bit coming off the bench, I think could be a really good player. I think our backcourt is really solid. Our front court, we still have some questions. Is Victor Locken going to be able to play 35 games this year like we need him to? Is Christian Reeves going to be able to come off the bench and be healthy and give us a seven-footer that can be a presence at the basket area? Um, you know, Ian will, will battle his tail off, and can he stay healthy the way he plays? You just knock wood that that's, that's true. But I think he's going to have a good year. Uh, there's a little bit of questions in the front court. Uh, Miles Foster, Illinois State transfer, can, what can he give us? A little bit of an undersized post player. So we'll see. You know, that part has been different. We do have nine new players. It's been, it's been different this year in terms of, like, practices are moving a little slower than the head coach would like, but we have to to get it right. So, uh, but that's something I haven't had to deal with the last two years. When are we getting his jersey? Retired, <laughs> Nobody's retiring that jersey. <laughs> Hey, they, they've put it in places that I don't – I mean, it, it might not be Little John, but it might be retired in a couple no, other spots. About retiring. <laughs> it's in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere. Uh, uh, I, I think the first question a lot of people ask, after you lose a guy like P.J., everybody's favorite golden retreat. Yeah, that's what it that's seemed right. like this past it's few good, years. Good way of putting it. Um, how does it – when you pick up locking up from Cincinnati, transfers over – when you're watching film of him, and now that you've had him in practice a little while, what can Tiger fans expect? What yeah. can they? Uh, what did you see in him that made you want to bring him to Clemson? The fact that he can play outside and inside. Yep. Um, our, our offense is better when we have bigs that can do both. Christian is a low block player, no problem. Victor needs to be a guy that can can move in and out, and obviously he can make a shot. He can dribble handoff he can boss he can pop he can do a lot of things he can pass out of the high post those are things that for us to play our best we need and I think he does those things pretty well um you know I'm excited by his development by his opportunity um but this, these are long seasons right these are long seasons and hopefully he's physically going to be able to hold up he's had some injuries in the past I think that's the question with a couple of our guys can we stay healthy have you gotten a chance to uh, ride with Ian in his Corvette yet? I have not. 
we have not done that. Uh, you know, I, I I leave the players alone when they get away from from my have office. Have you talked to them about like speed limits? Yes, or speed limits we have for talked a about speed limits for a reason. <laughs> Clemson is a very small place. Hey, perimeter uh, road, you can only exactly. get going so fast. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. I've got so, a ticket or two on that road. <laughs> thankfully, he's doing fine in that area. How, how is Chauncey Wiggins developed? He's a guy that I think if he takes the next yes. step, I think it changes your entire team. I do too, and I, I think that's really important. He's a 6'9", 6'10", forward that can do a lot of things, and he's got to do those things in this year. Like We need him to take the, the Ian Shefflin step from sophomore to junior year. If he can have that kind of year, I think we can be really good. Um, you know, he's wired a little different. He's not wired as – as uh, gregarious and as competitive day to day as my man Ian Shefflin, but he's a smart player. Yeah. Uh, he's a cerebral kid. Um, I think as he gains confidence through the course of the year, I'm hoping that that comes in January and February. It may take some time, but I'm hoping he gets there. He checks all the boxes as far as measurements, as far yes. as touch, ability to shoot it. I, I feel like if he takes that step, he's that third guy. It's, and I think they are going to need that third guy. I, I, in fairness to say, in defense of Joe Girardi, he had been zoned all of his life. I always <laughs> thought you were one of the most underrated defensive teams in the league, and this team feels like it, it, it gets back to some of the yeah. defensive. I think we have to be better defensively in terms of a different kind of style. Last year we really went position. Like We, we did not – you we probably did not played more zone than you ever yeah, did. We, you we ever played did a lot of yeah. – we played zone. We, we positioned defense. We didn't steal the ball, but right. we were bigger, and we kept people in front, and we did defensive rebound. This year's team, we've got to probably create a few more turnovers. We've got to knock a ball loose. We've got to score off our defense a little bit. Hopefully those are things that we can happen with our depth. Brad, there's, there's always pressure uh, around any of these types yeah. of jobs to win. Yeah. And obviously you've seen things in your career from all lens of the spectrum. It, it, it feels like some coaches – it's a what have you done for me lately world where you know you you go to a, a yeah. sweet 16 or an elite eight everybody's talking about that high and then it's you know okay well, what's going to happen the next season how do you how did you manage off of the the amazing season kind of relishing in that moment and 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 doing that but also the the harshness of of our world of college yeah. basketball which is the dreaded off season yeah if what's you will. next you know it, it it's amazing how fast it happens. Obviously, when you play later, the, there's less off season for you. You don't get a, a week to kind of get your mind right. You just got to go right in it, and you got to have player meetings and figure out who's staying, who's leaving, what do we need, how's that, a, you know, how do we get there? You got to paint a picture for your staff, and you got to get after it. Um, so you're almost too busy to worry about those things for a while. I do think now that we've things have settled down, it's it's. How do we consistently, you know, do do what we've been doing? And and we've been very good. We we're fifth in the league in wins in the last seven years. So we've we've since we got the upgrades in Little John, we've done some really good things. I'm proud of that. That consistency is why I've been able to keep the job. But it's it's you you also as the coach who's been on the bubble a couple times now, been on the firing line a little bit, like you just can't worry about those things. Things you can't control as as much as everybody knows it. You, you've got to leave it away like you got to leave it leave it be you can't wasting energy on those things is not going to help and so you know it, having good players helps having guys that are experienced helps believing in your guys setting forth a plan helps you can't worry about what's going on around you because um, there's always going to be some negativity if you want to look for it you lose Joe Girard uh, we've talked about Jane Zachary whenever we came there I feel like after watching film on him at Boston College as good as Joe was offensively, Jaden could possibly be that good defensively. It kind of fits what yeah. you like to coach and what it's yeah. about. Uh, how has he impacted everything kind of moving forward? And he's just this big, strong dude. Yeah, he's funny, his way man. The, yeah. It's funny when you have a guy who, like, and we've had a couple – Jack Clark from NC State and, and Joe Girard, and now Jaden, we've got guys from all these other – and you, you've got this perception of them while you coach against right. them and, and they're on the other – and then you see them every day. And, you know, Jaden's just a very – he just kind of comes in and does his job. I mean, he yeah. doesn't say a whole lot. He just kind of works. He's competitive. He's probably not a guy like Joe who you're going to run a bunch of plays for. Like, we ran a bunch of plays for Joe. Jaden just kind of is a player. He just kind of – he just does his thing. He's going to make open shots. He's going to be efficient. He's going to compete defensively. 
but he's not a guy that's like demanding the ball and he's probably his game isn't wired to like have the ball in his hands every possession and do things it's like he and chase should play nicely together because they can both kind of yin and yang with the ball a little bit and i do think the one thing that will help chase last year had to guard the other team's best perimeter player if it was a one or two all the time right jack clark took the wing who was really good but but you know when you're People don't think about this. I don't even know if I did. When you switch to becoming a point guard, you're now going to guard 50 ball screens. Oh, yeah. And so then it's like guarding the 50 ball screens and then offensively being able to still do the things you need to do, that takes a lot. Uh, some guys are wired for it. Others aren't. You said Jaden does his job. Uh, one guy who didn't do their job when they were a GA for you was one, <laughs> Terrence Ogles. Uh, I want a full scouting report of T.O., the GA. From years ago, you got to be honest too. I, I don't Lord. know why these guys are running you down like uh, this. I, man. It's it's, it's, it's commonplace. This guy, I got to I, 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 I I gotta give this. Down? I got to give this guy some strength now. I mean, I was a little bit <laughs> unsure, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> based on what guy? I was unsure. What, what, Had he not been a good player, you know, I don't know. And I thought that's all he wanted to do. He quickly got involved in all the things that you need to do that you don't want to do, yep. right? The paperwork, right? The details of the job. I worked my ass off. He, he was, yeah, he was good. He did a maybe, great job, maybe, and he was really good wrong. with the player. Maybe I have it all wrong because <laughs> no, that what he GA. realized no, is no, he he did one year as GA and then wasn't what you done two, two, two years two. as a GA and then he decided I don't want to coach. Got his degree, <laughs> right? So, got his two degrees. Listen, That's what I mean. I, got his degrees I'm and then realized that, like maybe yeah, you're not the easiest takes. Maybe you're not the easiest to work <laughs> for. Is, well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Coach Bender's been with me for like a thousand years. Coach Donlin played for he's been with me a thousand years. Lucas McKay's been with me five hundred years. He couldn't handle it. That's all it was. I mean, that's all it was. Some of us are softer than others. We oh. I mean, the guy, the guy only played offense, right? right that's I mean, like, oh, we know that. He was asked to play D. He left. You there just, you go. Hey, there I you would go. sub out. There you go. I've heard this about guy got, this, this guy got hey, a different I'm, philosophy. I, I, defense. Hey, the great me? part about coming back is you get to sub out there for you the go. defense. There you go. But I would ruin practice when I had me playing offense. Yeah. Tell him, Coach, he, don't, he, don't he, let them get away with this. I, like, I can see that. He'd love oh. being the scouting report. Oh, hey, hey, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, wait hey, at half court. Hey, look. <laughs> hey, hey, tell him about the drill that we used to do. 24, it was 30 seconds. You got to guard. You got to knock it out. All right. I'll you let you take you, it from here. Yeah, you just, you got it. You got it. You're on defense until you knocked all 30 seconds out, right? So then the. The scout team guys, and then this guy, Whoa, like you're getting as many shots up in 30 seconds as you. You're not like really trying to run a lot of offense because then he can only get two shots. Right, right. This guy's trying to like. Come I have to eventually. He's trying to get a career. High. I gotta tell him, hey man, like this is for our team to get better. <laughs> this is not for your points per game average. I mean, like we're trying to figure out how to guard a couple actions here. If I only had to play one side of the floor, I'd have been paid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you would have been. You would have been. That was great. Uh, working for Brad was great. I enjoyed the two years. It was awesome. Brad, great time. We appreciate the time. Thanks, good yeah. luck this year. Always good to be with you, man. Yeah, yeah. awesome Likewise. to see Coach Brownell and the Clemson. Appreciate it.